Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Bean, and we have got a great project for you today. Um, you're going to need to go pick up a couple things from the house, so I'm going to kind of go over the list of the things that you need to go grab. You are going to need to pick up some newspaper, and you don't really want the ads. You don't want anything shiny. You want just plain kind of newspaper, and um, so go grab some of that. You're also going to need some acrylic paints. Um, you want really bright, vivid colors, so you want that, you know, you could do aqua, lime green, bright kind of tangerine, orange, um, really bright, vivid colors, so grab some of those. You're going to need just some regular Elmer's glue. Um, if you don't have any of that, um, hot glue would work okay, but you're probably going to need to get mom or dad's help. Um, pencil, marker, eraser, scissors will also be helpful for today's project. And the last thing I'm going to need you to um, go grab is also going to be gesso. And we've used this in a couple other projects before, so if you've got some of that left over, um, this works great for this project. If you don't have any gesso and you can get mom and dad's help, you can use maybe some Kills primer and you can just spray it on there. That also works pretty good. Um, so if you don't have the gesso, see if mom and dad have some spray uh, primers. So that would be good. Um, you're also going to need kind of a thick piece of cardboard. You could use, um, you know, anything from a box lid that you could maybe cut into the size that you need. And you need it to be about 10 by 10. So something kind of thick. You don't want it real flimsy. So I'm going to give you a second to go grab those things and we're going to get started. I think it would be easy to tell which kids have trouble with their eyesight. But that's not always the case. Even though one in four children may have a vision problem, eye doctors tell us the symptoms aren't always so obvious. We do know that 80% of all childhood learning is visual. And without good vision, kids can have trouble learning to read and may fall behind in school. For clues on how to spot the real life signs of childhood vision problems and what parents can do, visit checkyearly.com. A public service message from the Vision Council of America and reading is fundamental. Welcome back. I hope you had a chance to grab all of the things that you need from around the house because we are ready to get rolling on this. I want to share with you for a second um, kind of my inspiration piece for this project. I was at Target, one of my favorite places in the whole wide world, and I happened to come across this flamingo kind of tropical looking um, tray. And I thought it had amazing colors in it, um, lots of overlapping, show some depth, and so I thought, you know, that would be a really great project. And so I was trying to decide, you know, what kind of a project we could do. And I wanted to really incorporate foreground, middle ground, background. And we're going to talk about that in a second. And I also wanted to incorporate, I wanted to show some overlapping because that really helps you to create some depth in your artwork. So if we were looking at this particular piece and we were trying to identify the foreground, the middle ground, and the background, the foreground is going to be the things that are closest to you in the picture. They are typically the things that are largest in the picture. All right, so those, these flamingos would be your things that are in the foreground. And then your middle ground, of course, is going to be in the middle. So that's going to kind of be some of this grass that you see sticking up. You can tell that these flamingos are in front of the grass because they are overlapping the grass. So this would kind of be your middle ground. Some of these other areas, uh, maybe some of these leaves that are hanging down in here might also be considered your middle ground. And then your background would be the things that are furthest in the back. They are typically the things that are the smallest in your picture. So in ours, not only are they the smallest, but they also are, they're not as vivid in color. So these pieces that you see kind of here, that kind of come into the background here, that aren't that real bright green like these here, show you that they are more in the, in the background. Okay, so we've got, we've got foreground at the very front, middle ground in these green areas, and then your background are the things that are furthest in the back, smallest, not as vivid of a color. So I want you to keep that in mind today because that is really what we're working on today. Foreground, middle ground, background, and we're working on overlapping. Now my kids at school have a really hard time with overlapping. 
um, trying to show that one thing is in front of another. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that today whenever we get started on the drawing part. All right? Okay, so I'm going to put this away. And I told you earlier that you were going to need some newspaper. And if you've been watching the show for very long, we've actually kind of used this technique before. So I'm going to just kind of go over it really quick. Um, we are going to need to roll and make some um, kind of coils, as you might want to call them, some strips of newspaper. And the way we're going to do that is really easy. You're going to need a ruler. If you don't have a yardstick, yardstick works the best. But if you don't have one, you can use a ruler. You just have to kind of keep adjusting. So I'm going to take my paper. And I, I've kind of, after I've done this for a while, if you'll kind of go ahead and fold your paper a little bit, and then you won't be rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. It'll go a little bit quicker. So you're going to line the edges up and you are going to start rolling. The object is to try to keep your paper really tight as it rolls around the ruler. And so you can do a couple rolls just to kind of get it going. Once you get it going, you want to put some glue down. And it does not take a ton of glue, just kind of a little bit here and there. You don't have to cover every single bit. Try to really hit the corners and the edges so that they will lay real flat. So you are going to roll a little bit more. And if you need to add some more glue, you can. Last little bit, put a little dot of glue there. Now, after you get that done, you are going to need to pull your ruler out. And then you're going to need to take your ruler and you want to flatten it out because we don't want it to be round or oval in shape. We want it to be very flat. We're making like a strip. All right. Now, you are going to need about 12 of these to complete our project today. You will have a few left over, but it's probably better to go ahead and roll um, and have some extras just in case you have a problem. So um, I want you to get about 12 of those rolled. And once you get those rolled, we're ready to start making our canvas. Our canvas is kind of weird today, but lots of fun. So I'm going to just kind of do a little mini one. I'm not going to be working on a big sheet of paper like you are at home. Your piece of paper, remember, is 10 by 10. Mine's a little bit smaller than that. Um, but I just kind of want to show you the steps, and I think you're going to get it. It's really, really simple. All right, so I'm going to start with my strips of paper. And I'm basically, if you've ever um, done any kind of a project where you have um, used anything to weave, basically we are going to weave our canvas. And we're going to do that using these strips. So remember, whenever you're weaving, over, under, over, under, you always do the opposite of what you did before. And so we are going to start um, making our um, warp, which is what we're going to be weaving in and out of. And then what you weave with, which is what we'll be using in a second, is going to be your weft. All right? So we're going to make our warp first. So in order to do that, my pieces of paper are so long, I'm hitting everything. All right, so you're going to need to put a couple strips that will go long ways down your paper. Remember that this is called your warp. So we're just going to lay them off. And I want you to see that when I put these down, I'm not putting the edge of the paper on the edge of my piece. So I'm going to kind of hold that so you can see it a little bit. These are hanging off. We want them to hang off. There's a reason behind my madness, I promise. All right, so you are just going to line these up. And they can be pretty close together. You can put a little bit of space in between, but you don't have to put a lot. And let's see, we're just going to line these up here. It doesn't really matter if they're even. It doesn't matter if the newspaper looks the same. Because remember, you're going to be using that gesso or your, um, or your primer to cover it anyway. So it really doesn't matter. Now, the trick with this is you kind of have to let it dry. So you've got to give it a few minutes, and if it comes up, it's no big deal. Now, we now have our warp, which means we've got all these different layers li laid down here, and we're now ready to begin the weaving process, which is the over, under, over, under. We're going to be weaving with what is called a weft, all right? Okay, so I'm going to kind of hold mine as I begin to weave. You might want to kind of glue your pieces down and then come back in a few minutes after it's dried a little bit. Now, I want you to notice, before I get started here, that my end pieces are not glued down. So these all can 
come up here. It's just glued on one side. All right. Okay, so I've got my weft, and you can start either going over or under. It doesn't matter. I always kind of like to start going under. So I'm just going to kind of stick that underneath there. And you can kind of, the reason why it's good to kind of leave those up is that you can kind of pick those up as you need to and pull it through. And you want to pull them through pretty far. And if those other ones start to come up, just push them back down again. Now this first time I went under, over, under, over, under. So then this next time when I start my next row, I'm going to do the opposite of what I did before. So the, on the first one I went under, so this time I'm going to go over. So I'm going to go over the first one, under the second one. And I'm going to continue that pattern. And you want to scoot these up really close together. So it kind of looks like a basket in a way because you're creating a really tight pattern of that over and under weaving. You don't want there to be space in between your wefts. All right. All right. So I'm going to continue to do that. And I'm going to do the opposite of what I did before. So before I went over, so now I'm going to go under. And you are creating a pattern as you are doing this. If you happen to notice after you get going that you've made a mistake, it's no big deal. At this point in the game, it is very easy to fix. Just pull it out and fix what you need to fix. All right, you're going to continue to do this until you get down to the bottom um, of your, your kind of cardboard sheet of paper. And once you get down to the bottom, you can stop and you're going to kind of put a some, couple little dots of glue to kind of hold everything in place. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to stop. All right, so this one is going to go, my pieces are moving. All right, under, over, and last one. Okay, now I'm going to scoot those really close together. You want them to be really close. All right, so I'm going to hold this up so you can kind of see what it looks like a little bit. So it looks like this. You've got this kind of basket weave looking kind of piece. It's okay that these are sticking up. It's okay that they're different lengths. I was going to also tell you, you know whenever you had these long ones like this, for your weft, you can cut one in half and it works good because they're a little bit shorter, not so difficult to work with because they're so long. All right, so we are going to stop here so I can show you kind of what I need you to do next. All right, you are going to need to get your glue. And right now, you can kind of lift this up, and it, it's not sticking. So we need it to stick down to that. So we're going to take some glue. You can actually be generous with your glue on this one. I know I usually tell you dot, dot, not a lot. But you can just glob that glue on there this time. All right, so you're going to glue that down. And the next thing that we're going to need to do is you can just kind of put this to the side and let it dry for just a little bit. Um, the next thing you're going to need to do is use that gesso to paint over everything. I'm not going to show you that process because it's just pretty simple. You just use your brush and you paint over everything. You want to make sure you get down into those little cracks. Um, if mom and dad are going to help you use the, the Kills primer to spray on there, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Let mom and dad help you with that. All right. So you're going to spray this. By the time you spray it, everything's going to be all the same color. All right, so I'm going to put this to the side. This was just kind of my little, little example to show you. And I'm going to kind of show you what it looks like after it's got the gesso on there. All right, so it kind of is going to look like this. And the next thing we're going to do is you're going to need your pencil, and we're going to work on that sketch, okay? So what I'm going to want you to do is remember that we're working with foreground, middle ground, background, and I want you to show overlapping, all right? Now, I'm going to kind of start to sketch out my design, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the um, overlapping. Um, flamingos have got those super, super long necks. Um, if you don't have a picture of a flamingo, you know, you can always go pull something up on the internet. I use the internet a lot just to kind of help me with the idea, the shapes of things. And so don't be afraid to go do that. Now, as I'm drawing my little pieces that are kind of at the end here, I'm just going to continue my drawing 
straight down onto that so you don't have to stop when you get to the end there. Just let it continue on off onto those things. All right, and let me see here. I'm getting one of them going pretty good. It's a little tricky when you're drawing on this surface because it's not going to be perfectly flat. You've got all those uneven um, weaving pieces that you put in there. But just do the best you can. You'll have to just kind of do sketchy kind of lines. All right. Now, one thing I will tell you as you're starting to draw these, remember those real skinny necks. And let's look at our piece again. The super, super skinny necks. Um, the head, if you're having a hard time, you know, you can kind of start with an oval and then erase what you don't need. Um, but what I want to show you really quick is the bill of your, of your flamingo. And they don't have bills like normal birds that come straight out, you know, as a, to a point. Instead, they've got these beaks that kind of curve down, all right? So you're looking for that that kind of comes out from the head and then curves down. And I've got some actually some inter interesting little um, flamingo facts that we'll talk about here in a little bit um, as to why their beaks are like that because they they end up filtering their food out of the water that they drink and so their beak kind of acts like a little trough that kind of holds the water and then they have got kind of comb like um, particles in their beak that kind of hold, they come down and they help to hold in the food or the nutrients and it lets the water filter out. So the bottom of their beak is kind of shaped kind of like a boat in a way. It's kind of um, concave like this. And so the bottom of their beak is like that and then the top kind of acts as a lid. So and then these little comb-like structures are all inside the bottom part and so as they're kind of doing their head down in the water it helps to filter out the water but keep the nutrients inside. All right, so as you're working on that curved down beak, um, I'm going to start, I'm going to kind of turn this so you can see it a little bit, and I'm going to start working on my other flamingo, and I want him to come across this direction so that their necks are going to overlap. So when I look at you, let me find something. Okay, look, when you look at this, and these two things are overlapping each other, you can't see through the pencil to see these parts of the of the marker because it's behind it. So it's kind of the same concept whenever you're trying to draw something. When it goes behind something, you're not able to see certain parts of it. It doesn't mean you can't see the parts that come down below or the parts that come up higher. You do see those parts. You just don't see the part that is directly behind the object that's in front. So I want you to kind of keep that in mind as you're beginning to sketch out your drawing. So I'm going to, a lot of my kids, they have problems with this. So sometimes I'll tell them, you know what, just draw it over it. And that way it kind of helps them to keep the image all together. And then go back and erase what you don't need. All right. So I'm just going to quickly get my sketch in there. So not only are your flamingo necks and heads going to somehow overlap one another, and that's up to you. You could overlap them just a little bit. You could have them, they could be twisted up in a little flamingo mess. And maybe their necks are just like, rear, rear, rear. that'd be okay too. Make it kind of funny. So I'm going to finish up my sketch. Not only do I want you to have the, the necks overlapping, I also want you to fill in your background with lots of leaves and foliage. So I want you to think about tropical leaves, the colors that you see, the textures that you see, and I want you to have those shapes coming in there, and I want to have them overlapping. So some of the leaves will look like they're on top of the others, and some will look like they're behind. So same kind of concept. If you need to draw it first and then go back and erase what doesn't need to be there, that's fine. A lot of people do that, so it's no big deal. So I've kind of finished my flamingos, and this, um, this particular drawing that we're doing today, it doesn't have to be super detailed. If you want to get real detailed with it, you can, but you don't have to. Do not forget the eye of your flamingo. They have very round eyes. If you happen, yours happens to fall, kind of like mine did, where the eye hits right where it's in between two of your 
of your um, your warp and your weft, there's a little hole in there. It's no big deal. You can kind of fill that in with the marker. So don't worry if something like that happens. No big deal. All right. So I'm going to um, kind of leave you guys to continue to add your your background, which remember you're going to do lots and lots of different kind of leaves. So I want you to think about the jungle and heavy, heavy foliage. All right. Remember to keep those leaves overlapping. You could even, if you want to, you could have a, you know, maybe part of a leaf comes down and overlaps your flamingo. That's okay too. And remember that we want your drawing to go all the way into these areas. So let them go down into these outer areas. It's okay. Now, once you get that finished, I want you to come in with a marker and I want you to outline everything. Because as you're doing this and because your surface is so uneven, sometimes as you're beginning to add color, it gets a little confusing if you can't really see your lines well. Make sure that if you, um, if you did go ahead and draw all of the lines, make sure that you've gone back and erased what you needed to erase so that you don't accidentally go over it with marker. If you did, it is no big deal. Sometimes the best things when you're doing a project is you might make a mistake. But, you know, sometimes you can fix a mistake. And you know what? Sometimes in my projects, my mistakes turn out to be one of my favorite things about the project. So don't always be so eager to erase all of your mistakes. All right. So I want you guys to continue outlining, get your drawing done, and meet me back. And we're going to talk about adding color to your picture. Welcome back. I hope that you enjoyed some of those interesting flamingo facts. I did. Um, I've been busy working and I'm adding some color to my picture. And um, a couple things that I want to talk to you about really quick um, is remember how we talked about whenever you're trying to create depth that not only do you overlap, but we also talked about middle ground, foreground, background. And remember we also talked about that the colors change as they go back into the background. They get um, not so rich and dark. They get a little lighter. So um, as I've been working today, I've been kind of trying to keep that in mind. So I want this front flamingo here to appear as if it is in the foreground, all right? So it's in front of this other flamingo. And so kind of in order to do that, I kind of wanted to change the color of this other flamingo that's further in the back a little bit. So um, think about kind of modifying the color a little bit. That also helps to create a little bit more depth in your picture. So as you are, you know, adding color and um, creating that kind of overlapping effect. Keep in mind that color also is a big factor. Um, also, I want to kind of point out to you guys as you're working that remember how I was telling you to continue your paint color and your drawing all the way down onto these, these little things that are hanging off here. So take that paint color all the way down to the bottom because you're going to actually be using that. Now, I will tell you one thing about this. Sometimes you have to do two coats of paint on these. And on this one right here, I do not have two coats of paint. But my example that I'm going to show you here in a minute does have the two coats. So um, keep that in mind. If you get done with your picture and it's not quite a really vivid, bright color, you may want to consider going back over it again. Um, also, as you're working, do not forget to really get that brush down into those little cracks and crevices and get your paint down in there. All right. Okay. So I'm going to stop on my painting part for today. Um, and I want to talk to you about the next couple little things that you need to do. You are going to actually be trimming off these 
side pieces here. All right, so let them dry and then you are going to come in and just trim those off and those can actually just go in the trash can unless you would like to try to do something else with them. And mine is being very stubborn and I can't get it off. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna trim all of this off. These on the top and bottom, however, are going to stay. They will stay on there. Some of these that um, when you were rolling, they're a little thicker than others. So some of them will cut easily and some of them will not. So if you've got a couple that are, are tough, get mom and dad to help you. All right, so after I get these side pieces cut off and whatever you've drawn on there, it's okay sometimes to just cut it off. It's no big deal. I know you're thinking, I gotta work so hard on that, but it's okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do is these pieces here, we are actually going to fringe the edges. So what that means is my piece of paper, if you'll look on the back here, my piece of paper comes down to here, all right? I wanna do cuts in the paper that goes all the way to my cardboard piece of paper, all right? And you're gonna do that top and bottom all the way around. Now remember, mine is not fully finished painting yet. Yours should be and give it a little bit of time to dry. And after you start cutting those little slits in there, fringing your edges, once you let them dry a little bit, you can kind of come back in and separate that paper a little bit. And I'll kind of show you what that looks like here in a minute. All right, now, so you're gonna fringe top and bottom all of these little things here. You want fringed edges. All right, last thing that we're gonna need I didn't mention this to you in the very beginning because it's kind of optional. If you have just black, um, black acrylic paint, you could just use a small brush and black acrylic paint. Or um, on a show before, I've used this before, I've got just black latex paint that has a little bit of water in it, so it is um, watered down a little bit. And basically you're just going to go in and re-outline over everything, leaves and all. All right. Don't forget to get in there around those, the beaks. And something else, as you're starting to add color, I should have mentioned this to you guys earlier, but um, flamingos' eyes are always yellow, unless they are a baby flamingo. And then they have gray eyes for the first year of their life, which I thought was fascinating that their eyes were gray. I just don't know what that would look like. Um, not only are their eyes gray, but their feathers are also gray for the first, first little bit of their life. All right, last little thing. Down here on the bottom where you have fringed, you can come in, you could do you know, lines to kind of seal off this place, or you could do dots. Kind of up to you on how you would like to do that. All right, so let me show you the finished product here. So this is kind of what we have going here. So you've got all your edges are fringed, kind of like a grass skirt, lots of fun. And um, remember, your color goes all the way to the end. I did dots on mine after I outlined everything. Um, so this is our finished product for today. You can hang this on the wall and be very proud of your work. Now let's talk about our art quote for the day. Creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes. Art is knowing which ones to keep. Our quote this week is by Pete Modrion. All right, boys and girls, I hope that you had a fun time with our project today. Now go out and make some amazing art.